Miles back to return. A low line driver. And here goes Miles. And he gets just short of midfield. Uh, that's how you have to do it if you're the punter. It's like playing a Lynx course at the British Open. 7-3. <laughs> Arizona State on top. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, and Shelly Smith, glad you're with us here at Sun Devil Stadium. Arizona State up 7-3 on number 23, USC. So Cameron Marshall's 70-yard touchdown run to get the night started for Coach Erickson's squad. On a right bad now. ankle, no less. Yeah, sprained ankle. We didn't think he was even going to see playing time. Second and 11 now for Osweiler. Pressure, he steps up, gets it, oh, incomplete, right off the hands of Robinson. Let's check in with Reese again. Joe, West Virginia had fought back, gotten back in the game against LSU. is 27-21 after a Mountaineer touchdown and the kickoff to Morris Claiborne. And Morris finds an alley. And then he runs through a Mountaineer. And then he is off to the races. LSU back on fire in Morgantown, 34-21 after three. Thanks, Reese. Third and 11, and they pick up the first time. This time, Robinson does hold on to it. Flag uh, came down another there. Another flag. But, you know, Osweiler is growing up. He stood in there and was willing to take the hit. Last week against Illinois, he kind of shied away from the pressure a little bit and had six sacks. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number seven of the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. I guess T.J. McDonald didn't learn his lesson. Well, we talked about how he can he can impact the game. But first, let's go back and take a look at Osweiler. He hangs in there on this thing. He knows he's going to get hit. That's much better than last week. And then McDonald on the other end, already one hit, and then a second one. That one's not as bad as a not first as one because you got Robinson with his head going down anyway. I'm not so sure about that one. Miles is the back with Osweiler. Here's Fubrad. Fumbles the ball. And Willie was there to jump right on it. The senior receiver, Mike Willie, looks like he's on top of that ball at the bottom of that pile, and he is. Aaron Flubrad, who had that memorable night against Mizzou, eight receptions, 180 yards, and a couple touchdowns. As you see, Mike Willie, last man to get up. Torin Harris, the USC cornerback, came in and caused that fumble. He's going to bring up a second down and short, it looks like. Lots of options for Osweiler here. Marshall is in the backfield with him. And then he gets the call. First down and lowers the pads and gets it all the way down to the five-yard line where he was met by McDonald and Harris. Well, Marshall is a big back. He's almost 225 pounds, about 5'11". You saw his speed earlier, but watch him finish this run. He knows it's a short yardage situation, lowers the shoulder. That's big stuff. Take it on Harris out there, finish that run. Runs in the first and goal. Bunch receivers to the far side. Marshall gets the call again. And the ball came loose at the end of that run. And USC has it. I think they're going to take a look at this one. But he coughed it up on first and goal. And USC jumped on it. That was George Uko. Uko the with the recovery. got there. on top of it. Well, they'll be looking to see was his knee down when the ball came out, and it looked like his right knee hit the ground before the ball came out. Watch that knee of Marshall. Yeah, you look right there, knee is down. Ball's in out. And USC should try and hurry up and get that play run. Jim Northcott from the Pac-12 is our replay official. Yep. So remember, the call on the field is a fumble recovered by USC, so they need the indisputable evidence that says otherwise. Well, Tess, if you want to look closely, there's the knee right there. Knee is down, ball is in the hand. 
that's what they're looking at. They're going to turn this one over. They've got... Well, let me offer up a question for you, Rob, because they take that word indisputable very serious. Yeah. And in that shot we saw right there, there was the leg of a USC defender that was in the frame that didn't fully show us the knee. I think you can clearly make the assumption of the knee down, but... Just take another look here. Maybe it's the same look they just showed us. Counselor, well, here's a different look. Counselor, good argument, but That's you're not going to win the day. Yeah, there That's you go. The That's one. down, and the ball is in. It was a very good try. I'm going <laughs> to give you points for that. Well, listen, I know. But it's not going to win the day. We've seen the way these guys operate. <laughs> and, and they have to have 100% no doubt proof to overturn it. That's I think how that's, the rule is written. I think that was that clear. view that they just showed is clear that the knee was down. Yeah. Of course, first and goal. This is an opportunity that Arizona State cannot afford to miss out on. The way things have gone in recent years, the way things have gone in this series well, with USC. They've had so many close calls yeah. during the 11 games that they've lost consecutively to them. Well, and they've got a huge crowd, a sellout crowd that they want to keep involved in the game. Here's another look at what was ruled a fumble by Cameron Marshall, but watch the knee. Yeah, he's down, knee and hand down, and then ball comes out. After further review, it was determined that the runner's knee was down. Prior to the loss of the Arizona State's ball, second down at the five-yard line. And then Kiffin saw that one coming. Yeah, you know, with the new rule, you have your coaches up in the booth who have monitors who can see this, so I'm sure they told Kiffin what they saw and that it was going to be overturned. Cameron Marshall stays out there. Second and goal. Miles now in motion. He's a do-it-all guy for them. Osweiler's going to try to do it himself, and he spins down to the two-yard line where he was met by Chris Gallipo. Aren't you surprised at how much he's running with the football? Well, to your point earlier, he's six foot eight, but body type, the way he goes about his business on the field, he plays like a smaller quarterback, a more mobile quarterback. Highly confident. You know, a little Vinny Chase in him. <laughs> he's, he's got the look. Looks like him, too. Yeah, he really yeah. does. Third and goal. There's that diamond backfield that's become popular. And he's going to pass out of it. And he's got the touchdown with a flag. It'll hold up Jarrell Robinson with the score. Now they're going to gather here and discuss which way this goes. But the coverage came from Roby. Pass interference. Number 21 of the defense. His penalty is declined, resulting in a touchdown. It was Roby who made contact for Roby Robinson. Roby is giving up a lot of size over there. He's only 5'8", facing a 6'4", inch receiver. And Robinson was able to take advantage of that. The root tacks it on. And a nice cushion now for the Sun Devils. Could this be the night? that they break that stretch 11 straight for USC in this series.